right, guys, welcome back to another live Q&A. Um, this is Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer and founder of the Canadian Immigration Institute. It's great to have you joining me. I'm a little bit late today just because I was finishing up a video that I needed to record and release. And uh, I'm not sure really where things are going to go. So one of the things you guys realize with these live Q&As is that I have, um, I have kind of rapid fire questions coming. And so I have very little time to kind of think and ponder before I answer. And I created this so that I could try to help as many people as possible. But just last week, it would have been the, the video that I did on May 5th. Someone asked a question that then directly led to me answering, uh, giving an answer that was just flat out wrong. It was incorrect. And the problem with all of these YouTube uh, things that, uh, that I've undertaken in is once something is said, you can't really retract it. And then you also can't control um, what people do when they, they take those comments and then they kind of use them for whatever purposes. And so it's fine when the information I'm giving is correct, right? But if I say something that isn't correct um, based on assumptions that are just not founded in fact, then uh, it's really hard to retrace that. And I guess that's one of the problems with this world of social, social media, right? Anything that you post uh, you better make sure that it's correct. So as an immigration lawyer, I'm held to a higher standard and I need to make sure that the information I'm sharing is, is, is correct. Now, I have my opinions and that's fine. I can have my opinions. I can express my opinions, my thoughts. Um, but if I make a comment that's not correct, then I have to own it and I have to um, make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to correct it. And the context for this is, is just in the video that I just released and you can go to the YouTube channel and you can find it. And I'm not going to get into a lot of details with it, but it's kind of coloring what I'm doing going forward because I don't want to be in a position where, you know, I'm potentially exposing myself or anyone else to information that's not correct. I never envisioned this channel would be to the point where people would be, you know, literally relying on a re relying upon it uh, to make decisions with their lives in, in, in such a grand scale. So if you want to go back, I'll if I flip my screen over here. I don't know how you can see this. OK, we'll expand it a little bit. So I just released this video here, um, and it's this one that's in, it's about the 10 Quebec colleges correcting errors and setting the record straight. So I recommend anyone that had, uh, you know, that, that has anything to do with this to watch that video, including the colleges themselves, because obviously the colleges are hopping mad and I don't blame them. Um, you know, the comments that I made were ill-informed and were not, um, you know, uh, they were based on experience that I had in the past. Um, dealing with people who had been exploited by um, some schools here in Canada that were not very good. And so I didn't know any of the schools. I didn't know anything about the situation. So the comment was more a generalized comment based on my own personal experience dealing with individuals and in no way was intended to be a reflection on any one particular school. But it doesn't matter. Once you say something, the words that come out of your mouth then are fully available for anyone else who wants to then use them to advance their own cause or to, you know, further damage, you know, competitors' reputations. And that's what happened. And I had no clue what it was really, you know, I had no context for, for making that. So I have to be a lot more careful. And so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to continue doing these live Q&As. I'll be honest. You know, it'll depend what happens. If the schools decide to file a lawsuit against me or something like that, I don't know what they're going to do. But, um, but it's going to determine whether or not I continue doing these. And I hope, you know, that I'm, uh, you know, I'm making a positive influence in the world, that I'm doing things positively. But it was like a 20-second clip, right? But, but my comments were, were born out of my own experience dealing with individuals where there was nothing that I could do. And, um, and unfortunately, as it always tends to happen, um, the, uh, you know, when you have one intention trying to do good, uh, sometimes even when you're trying to do good, you can do harm. And that's, you know, uh, you know, there was a potential for that within within the comments that I made. And yeah, crooked, unscrupulous people are taking it and, and using it. And uh, which I'm really, really, yeah, really regret happening. So once again, we're back here and uh, we've got a good group of people that are tuned in. And and um, <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> to drum up the... <laughs> Uh, the ability to wade back in here um, because, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, it's hard. I'm having even trouble kind of thinking straight, I'll be honest, because I don't want to be in a position again where I answer a question that maybe, 
and someone could rely on it to, to their detriment. And I think right from the beginning, I've, I've made it pretty clear that if there's something that's a legal question, then basically what happens is I, I ring this little bell here, right? And then I say book a consult. But in the context of the question that was asked, it was a generalized statement that wasn't related to anyone in particular, but uh, it kind of didn't go the direction that I wanted it to. So I'm going to try to be more careful and, and um, you know, but at the same time, I want to continue to help you guys. I want to be able to continue to assist. And I've been doing this for years and years. I've never had an issue to this stage. And sometimes I am critical of the government. Sometimes I am critical of representatives and uh, critical of people that are, you know, um, in their own world doing things that I don't necessarily agree of. And I guess that's why I wanted to create this channel in the first place was to have a platform where I could express my views. But I am an immigration lawyer and I'm, you know, held to a different standard. So hopefully the video will help to correct any of those issues. And I encourage you guys to share it freely and and to, uh, you know, to, <laughs> to help me and disseminating this correction of, of this short little 20 second clip that now is really it's significantly affecting what I'm doing and, and uh, whether or not I will continue to, to do this stuff. Um, you know, at the end of the day, life is too short, right? And, and uh, but at the same time, I also have found that when you're trying to do things good, you're trying to make a difference in the world, there's always going to be periods of time where not everybody agrees with what you're doing. And in fact, some people, you know, they, they don't want you to succeed and they want you to, to be destroyed and they want you to be shut down. And, and, and uh, I hope it's not there, but at the end of the day, you can see how easy it is for, uh, for things, you know, well intentions to, to be, um, yeah, to be transformed. So, all right. Well, Let's let's try to answer a few questions here. I'll see if I can wade back in. Uh, um, for those of you who are, you know, going through the TR to PR pathway, we're still waiting for information on how kind they're going to be. You know, I've seen so many comments from so many people out there that have made mistakes and, you know, in their application and now are wondering if they can fix them. Are they of such a serious nature that they're not going to be able to? To fix them and immigration is going to refuse their application and they're going to lose out on this one-time opportunity or is it someone that is um just has made a small little mistake and you know it's not going to impact but we just don't know and that's the challenge so those of you who still are in the process of, of filing through the essential worker streams or the french speaker streams um please make sure that you take your time and and that you do what you can to uh, to, to make sure that everything is proper and correct. And there's lots of information out there. The link to my course I've revamped, excuse me, I've recorded pretty well, a lot of the videos now that we know the real answers and I've re-recorded a lot of the videos. So it's almost in a way like new content. And so you can go in there. The Facebook group is wonderful. There's just a group of awesome people in there. And, uh, yeah, if you're looking at going through the TR to PR pathway, go check it out. And also, um, I wanted to let you know that because things have kind of settled down a little bit here and I have a little bit more breathing room. Um, if you go back to the Canadian Immigration Institute site and you see our courses, you'll see that the TR to PR pathway is 50% off. But the express entry course right here is, um, uh, that one is now uh, going to launch. So on May the 17th is when we're gonna go. And it's, uh, now understand, even though it says May 17th to the 21st, you have access to everything for life. And uh, it's just that in the evening from 5 to 6 p.m., from the 17th to the 21st, that's when I'll be doing all my live sessions. And why is it one week of live sessions versus two? Well, it's pretty simple because what I found in my previous courses is that the course itself is so comprehensive and so full that usually uh, by the time we get to the live sessions in week two, it's like we're just visiting and saying hi because I've answered all the questions. And so, yeah, so the, um, so that's launched. And those of you who've got your ITAs or are considering express entry because the TR to PR pathway doesn't work out, go check out that course. I'd love to have you in that, in that next group. Okay. Um, okay. Roshan here. Oh, I'm scared to pull up any comments anymore. I'll be honest. Roshan says, hope you're doing well. Well, Roshan, I'm not doing so well right now. That's for sure. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that the schools as well that suffered from, uh, you know, the comments that I made are also not doing very well. And so, um, 
hopefully I can kind of fix this. But, you know, I, at the end of the day, I got an email from one of the schools that was pretty, <sighs> it was pretty direct, right? It was pretty, um, they were very upset and I, and I don't blame them. I, I don't at all. If I was in their position, I would be the same. Yeah. All right. Hello, Randeep. Good to see you. Uh, Amit down in Virginia. Good to see you. Mantej, hi. And we've got Sid tuning in here. And um, Wendy, they're not going to count more than 30 hours per week if you're trying to accumulate 1,560 hours in less than one year. So you have to have been working for a full year. So you can't work 40 hours and then accumulate it in 11. <laughs> Veronica says, you look worried. Yeah, I'm really worried, actually. I'm really concerned because I never, ever want to, to say anything that is going to harm anyone. If someone, you know, I have my opinions on, on a lot of things and, um, and those opinions are, are perfectly free to be expressed. But when I misstate something that simply isn't true, then um, based on an assumption that I've made, then that's where I have to own it and be, you know, be very, very careful going forward. So good to see you, Jamel. Um, okay, let's see here. Keep zipping here. Yep, you're ready, Krishna. I can see that as you're ready. Um, Samir says, do I help with common law sponsorship? You bet we do, Samir. Just go over and book a consult on our, our website. You can click on the link below. Okay. And some people might be asking questions. I'm just going to flip back here. So these, uh, So when it comes to the course here, like if you go in and you click on register now for the course, these these are, you can see this is in US. So the course is in US dollars. And it looks like there were some other people that were asking questions. And if we go back and we go to, to this TR to PR, it's the same thing. So these are in US dollars because that is where the course is housed within that, within that organization. So when you go to the TR to PR pathway, you can see it's 50% off. So it's 173.50. And at this stage for the essential workers, um, uh, that's where the price is going to be. Okay. Um, and it'll be open until the program is closed on November the 5th. All right. Okay, let's zip back here and see if we can get into a few more questions. Um, okay, Peter's watching from Saudi Arabia. Um, yes, and we have Hitesh. He's one of the TR to PRs probably. Uh, I, okay, I my mistake. I put not applic applicable in my application, so it will be a rejection. I'm not sure where that question would uh, would relate to. So... <laughs> okay, um, Cynthia, thank you. Well, I need I need some <laughs> some props today because I've got some very very unhappy people. I never dreamed, like I'll be honest, um, that my comments would actually have the effect that they do, and that's changed things for me. I can't just like I've got a duty now and a responsibility to be careful how I answer questions, and um, I you know probably in the past I was a little bit too cavalier in my responses and I tended to be a little bit too passionate sometimes and um, and now definitely going forward you learn a lot from these experiences so I'm just hoping that you know that I can continue to do this uh, yeah all right let's keep going here um, uh, Bhavan mistaken your your 5669 your schedule a do I need to send a new uh, or just LOE is good. Vivon, we don't even know if that's going to work, my friend. Um, we don't know to what extent we're going to be able to update or fix or correct errors that are within the application. Um, but as soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. Okay, Smriti says, uh, how are you doing? I'm not doing so good, Smriti. <laughs> is Canada still processing closed work permits for non-essential workers? Um that's a good question. There's too much to that one to be able to really answer, Samriti. I know that uh, with the travel restrictions, unless you are, that you fit within an essential service, as long as those orders and counsel are in place, then immigration is not going to, it doesn't do any good if they approve because you can't travel. So, uh, so at this stage, we've never heard anything from them yet indicating that they were going to be uh, starting to process and lift things in, in the normal course. Okay, Sarab says, uh, work visa processing for Canada for is on hold. No, it's not. 
it's not completely on hold, but what's happened is there are a lot of restrictions that are being placed right now, and it depends on the circumstances. And with, uh, you know, every day it changes. And so um, this is something that people are having to, to readdress uh, medical issues. There's been a lot of things that have come up on very, very short notice that have taken a lot of people by surprise uh, with processing in India. And things are not, they're not great right now because of the pandemic. So in terms of, you know, is, is there a blanket hold? There isn't a blanket cross you know, ban on all visa processing. Um, and when it comes to work visa processing, you know, uh, essential workers and things like that, like there is still mechanisms to move forward, but everything is really, really slowed. Okay, wrong knock code while applying. Yes, so that could potentially be a problem on us, especially if you're an essential worker. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Abdul says, Hey, what's up, Mark? The ambassador of TR to PR. RC should pay because you became the main speaker. I want to tell you and have you. Thank you so much, Abdul. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see here. The sir says, hey, Mark, it's so nice to see the views for your videos go up day by day. You'll be one of those big YouTubers soon. Well, we'll see if that's going to happen. I'm going to have to be very, very careful what I say going forward to Sarah, but I sure hope that everything can be can be worked out. That's for sure. Okay, let's see what we have here. Got some hellos. Hi, guys. Um, let's see here. Bella, thank you so much. Good to see you, Bella. Okay, here's a tough one. Julian says, hey, I'm an asylum seeker in another country. Do you think I have the chance of getting my study permit? I can even go back to my country to the application. My asylum petition was rejected. Wow, that's so hard, Julian. You know, whenever you make any kind of an asylum claim to anywhere, it does have an effect on your application. It just depends on a number of factors. And ultimately, it comes down to whether or not the officer feels that you will return when your uh, study permit is expires. And that can often be a really, really tough case to make depending upon the country you're coming from and in the context of filing an asylum claim for another country. So yeah, Julian, it's possible that it could be a real big hurdle for you um, because it is something that officers look at. Okay, no word yet uh, about the outlanders and uh, receiving their PPRs. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I had a consultation with someone just yesterday, uh, sorry, on Monday, um, that talked about this. And, uh, you know, everything is there. We pulled up the GCMS notes. So until the border restrictions lift, there's not going to be much that we can do. Okay. Oh, here's another tough one. Muhammad forgot to upload marriage certificate. Will it reject it? You know what, Muhammad? We just, I don't have answers yet at this stage, what immigration is going to do. But I hope they're watching this and I hope they can see that, you know, with the rush and the, the frenzy that they created, there's a lot of people who did make mistakes. And I'm just, my petition and my advocacy on all of your behalves is that it's going to, oh, that, that immigration will, will show mercy. <laughs> okay, so this one says I've got 1,500 hours in essential second. Can I still apply? So I'm still working. You need to have the 1560 by the time you submit your application. So you can't submit early and then claim it after. Okay, people in Canada, like Kaushik here, whose application is kind of tied up. Um, I'll be honest, Kaushik, that's not something that I can, really, I can really answer. There's a lot of different factors involved, maybe background checks, maybe a security screening, maybe things like that are what's holding it up. I can't speak. Everybody is a little bit different, and, and I understand the delays with, with processing. Um, you know, June of, CE, June, June of 2020, I understand 11.5 months is a long time. Um, but um, at this stage, I think um, there's, there's really, from my perspective, not much that, that I can do. Um, when you, I recommend you, you pull up your GCMS notes and see if there is you know, something else that's kind of holding it up. Because sometimes if they have questions about anything in your application, or maybe if you have um, you know, dependents outside Canada, I'm not sure if that's the case, sometimes those things can, can add a delay. Oh, Sid says, 11 days IELTS results haven't come for computer-based. Oh, I'm sorry, Sid. 
Okay, uh, Mansi says, can we leave work after applying in the TR to PR? Well, we know that the policy says you need to be employed at the time in which you file your application. I'll tell you right now, if you guys leave the very next day, well, you still have to be able to prove that you were actually working in the time in which you submitted your application. Now, if you say leave to go take another job, there's not going to be a problem with that at all. You can do that if you're on an open work permit and authorized to do that. Um, so, uh, but but if someone is takes a position for one day and then they stop working the day after, well, immigration's going to wonder if you are, you know, they're going to have questions for you and you're going to have to really justify how at the time in which you filed you were currently employed. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay. Vishwesh says, good to see you again, Mark. In a Russian selected single in the marital status, but in my former states, I'm married. How can I change? Same thing. These are lots of things I understand with the rush, especially people who were in a just a really, really difficult position. So my you know, we'll keep you posted and, and we'll I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I hear any developments. Yeah, I don't know, Victor, whether they're gonna I suspect that everybody's gonna receive an acknowledgement of receipt. This is what I believe. Um, ultimately, the application could move forward to, to a rejection if you're missing critical components that go to the eligibility, um, but we just don't know. And so, um, you know, it's, it's tough. When you go to uh, submit a web form right now, TR to PR pathway, I don't believe is on the list. And so, and without an acknowledgement of receipt, there isn't a clear way to link it to your application. And so people that are submitting those web forms right now, you know, where are they going? Are they going to be able to line it up with your UCI and the right application? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, we're just waiting to see what happens here. Lots of people are asking the same questions there about you. What do we do if we made a mistake when, during the rush? Yeah, and those who are who were in the issue, Roshan, I think I answered this one already. Um, you did what you needed to do. You know, a copy of the receipt you know, when it didn't issue it, when the system crashed, um, yeah, that copy of the, the statement showing that the payment came out, those are going to be uh, very, you know, uh, very, very, very persuasive. Okay. Let's see here. Rohit, I'm going to hit click, click this one here because I'm not sure exactly what you mean by license submission. So um, I understand your application is moving forward and it says, do I need to renew the license, which is required for SIMP? I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> Victor says, I already watched it. Great video. <laughs> Vishwesh says, why are your eyes red? My eyes are red because of no sleep, my friend. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I've been to more than one country for over more than six months, how do I upload documents in the same spot? If I've been to more than one country for over six months, how do I upload two documents in the same spot? You, you bundle them together into one PDF. That's what you do. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, uh, Vish, Vishwaraj has, he says in the education section, I entered my university start date in the to and end date in the from column. Will there be any problems? Um, well, the university start date and end date, it's, that's a tough one. <laughs> I don't think there's any problem with that. I'm, maybe I'm not quite understanding the question, Vish. Um, to an end date in uh, start date in the to and end date in the from. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, you got it backwards. I think immigration probably will realize that. I understand what you're doing now. You inverted them. And so um, in that case, yeah, I'm not sure what, what the consequences. I, you know, I think, Vish, in those circumstances, immigration is probably going to ask you to correct it because it's, it's a clear, clear, um, just typographical error. Yes, simply Shalanda, I am moving forward with the spousal course. Yes, I am. <laughs> Nikita, 
Thanks, guys. She says, yes, but this is not a legal consultation. No, it's not. Let them pay a lawyer. It's error. Okay, but I look at RCC blunder. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm human, but sometimes people just, it's very easy to find a target, right? And things are not going well for, for, um, you know, for education in a lot of those schools and they're not going, things aren't going well in the greatest of circumstances because of the pandemic. So, you know, when a comment like that comes and, it, you know, and, um, it just kind of puts salt on the wound, right? Especially when it wasn't accurate. So that's, yeah, that's kind of how it works. Um, Someone said that the timeline for AOR start on May 15th. Well, I guess we'll see what they, we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Bella says, sorry, happened to you. People can be so cruel when it comes to just Yeah. They, uh, the, the reality is Bella, I think it goes both ways. I think the schools are probably feeling the same way about my stupid comment. And, uh, and so in, in like manner, the fact that these agents overseas are twisting it and using it for their own purposes. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it's a catch 22 bell. And when you wade into this world, this is what you have to be, you know, this is what you have to recognize is going to happen. This is a potential, right? So we'll, we'll just have to see how it plays out. All right. Um, okay. So this person's FSW. Okay. So outland applications, simultaneous full-time work with more than one employer. Okay. So that's accepted as long as it's in the same knock code. Can I include only one to claim CRS points and explain the other personal? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, you only need to, to include one if that's what you'd like to do. That's fine. Yeah, no updates yet, Tamin. No updates. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> Oh, well, I hope it's not going to come to that. I'm doing what I can to try to, uh, to try to repair any damage that, that may have been caused. So I, uh, I appreciate that, Victor. That's very, very kind. Uh, okay. Okay. So Hitesh says, oh, that's a lot of cues there. By mistake, I put my, uh, uh, my, uh, I, I put not applicable in the family name and forms for application. Will it be caused of rejection? Um, so where did you put the name then? Do you have a Do you have a name? I'm assuming that maybe you don't have one, and then you just put NA instead of leaving it blank. If that's the case, Hitesh, then I don't think that's going to be a problem. Harpreet says, "What documents I need to prove my work is essential? Pay stubs, reference letter." Um, so if, in, if this is in the context of the TR to PR pathway, yeah, it's all in the guide. So it's all in the guide. Go check out the TR to PR pathway guide and it can explain that. Okay. And then this one here, uh, I'm going to ring the bell, uh, Sharandeep. This specific one, you'd really need to book a consult so that we could go through that in detail because I can't answer that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Victor, it is normal for YouTubers. It is. I was making a, a little bit of a joke in my, um, when I was doing the videos, the tutorial videos for the TR to PR pathway. And it says your current occupation and your intended occupation. Um, and you're supposed to indicate that in the forms. And, and I, I jokingly put immigration lawyer and then, and then YouTuber and my goodness. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to do that anymore, uh, Victor. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. <laughs> Vishvesh says, let the dogs bark. You're doing amazing. We're with you. Nothing will happen to you. Well, Vishvesh, the reality is those schools, they, you know, they've got their own uh, reputations to, to, to defend. And I'm hoping that my, my video was enough to help anyone over in India, because really that's where this is happening. It's India uh, to realize that, um, you know, that the comments should not have been uh, and, and should not be relied upon to make any or pass any judgment on any of those schools. Uh, those 10 schools that I don't even know, like literally before I made the comments, I didn't even know which schools it related to. I knew nothing about it. It was an offhand comment that I should have, I should have had more pause to, but because of my experience with other people who's had their, their lives literally destroyed because of um, just education agents and people taking advantage of them and exploiting them. When I saw that comment, this, this feeling welled up inside me, you know, and then, 
you know, the, and then it's no, like, I don't blame the schools that are trying to do things right. They're trying to, to create really, really good pathways to education and they care about what they're doing and are following all the rules. And then they get lumped in, right? They get lumped in with these overgeneralized comments and like the media does it all the time to people all the time. Right. And, um, and unfortunately now I have to realize that I'm, I'm, I guess I'm now in that world and I have to be very cautious what I say. So yeah, I'm deeply, deeply saddened by, you know, how my comments affected people. And I hope that this, yeah, I hope that this can be resolved. Um, Okay. And yeah, anything related to international students, I'm going to avoid that like the plague. <laughs> Don't overthink it. You will be for me. I bet you. Okay. Well, I hope so. <laughs> oh, wow. This is how many comments are behind here. Now we're getting comments. No problems. Lots of people supporting you. Motivate and like you for what you're doing. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see what else we have here. Okay. People have got some little comments. They're coming again. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Yaku says, you don't have to give up on this. You're doing this good students and other workers. And if anyone had, uh, have a consult question, you ring the bell and that's good. It's just a piece of advice. That's right. Yaku, that right. And thank you, Harpreet. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Ben, sorry. I did my PCC on an old address. Will that work? So different countries have different rules, right? And I don't know which country that you're, you know, you're related to. Um, generally speaking, immigration doesn't care too much about addresses. It's whether or not the police certificate is um, like in your country. If it's based on an address, then, um, you know, they want to know that the search is actually being conducted for the region in which you lived. And the danger that happens sometimes if you have an old address is that the police certificate may not be covering the place where you actually lived. And, you know, some countries have that. So it's hard to say one way or another, you know, the impact of that. Ben sorry, we always try to follow exactly what immigration is asking us to do um, in those police certificate instructions. Abdul says, I don't have my English test yet, so I can't apply for a student's program. Okay. Um, well, the TR to PR pathway for international grads is closed. So that's not an option for you. Um, <laughs> Bella says, this is the part I hate about social media. Things are taken often out of context and ripped apart. They are Bella, you know, but this comment, you know, when I, I misread the question is what happened. And so um, I didn't realize in the context of making those comments that I did, uh, I knew nothing about the schools. I knew nothing about this alleged suspension. And the reality is the suspension wasn't even a suspension. It was, it was, uh, uh, it was the, they, they temporarily suspended the issuances of CAQ, MIDI did, um, which is the approval to then, you know, um, apply for uh, study permits. And so the schools themselves weren't suspended, but the question, the way it was phrased, it, it um, yeah, I just, I took it at face value because I knew nothing about the background. So it was a generalized comment that, man, I wish I could take it back now. Okay, Sivirat so says, can we leave the country and quit our current job after applying in the tier to program? Anybody have any idea? I recommend against that. I recommend against leaving the country because you have an obligation to show that you're in the country at the time in which you submit your application and at the time in which it's approved. And if you're not, you know, if you're, if you're quitting your job and you're leaving, um, you expose yourself to the possibility that maybe travel restrictions happen and then you're not able to... Um, um, you know, you're not able to get back in the country when they want to approve it and then you lose your opportunity. So I never advise people to leave, Rod. True, Victor. The bad will always try to stop the good. That is, that is true. That is true. I just have to make sure that I'm not the bad, right? <laughs> That's the key. That's the key here. Um, okay. Uh, um, <laughs> Total football says I, I could not receive the translation of the police and marriage certificate on time when I applied for the TR. Can I submit that later? That's an issue. That's an issue because you have an obligation to submit your application with all of the information, including translation. So it could be a problem. It could be. Wano, thank you. I was okay. So um, 
Manak uh, says, I was studying while I was working full time. Can I claim points uh, for that under the SSW, FSW? If you're outside of Canada and you are not on a study permit, you know, well, obviously you're outside of Canada and you're working and studying outside of Canada, then yes, you can. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. I appreciate that. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. And thank you, Mattoon. I appreciate that. I, you know, that's my whole purpose is to try to help people. And um, yeah, but you learn, right? You learn and you, you hopefully try to fix when you make mistakes. You try to correct things as, as best that you can. And then you try not to make the same mistakes again, right? And I think that's, you know, to a large extent, I'm sure this is going to make me better at what I'm doing. Um, a little bit more cautious. I tend to be a little bit passionate as you guys know, I tend to be someone who really wears my emotions on my collar. And like I said, that, that comment I made was just a, a reaction of things that have been building for years with stories of education agents and, and, and really schools that are not so good who, who have exploited people and schools that have been delisted and things like that. But in this context, that wasn't the case at all with um, what I was commenting on. So I pulled all of this background and history into making these comments and um, and they were, they just like, it, it was like me kind of just a reaction to something that I had been so frustrated with for years and years when it was just misplaced and, and uh, you know, to the detriment of, uh, of, you know, indirectly, although I never mentioned a single school, people could figure it out and extrapolate and I didn't even know who they were when I made the comments. So anyways, uh, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ness, it's been a week. Yes, it has. And and I've actually, yeah, it's been, um, yesterday was a really, really good day. My son turned 18 years old and um, I took him and, and my my other son, Adam, and we went out and we, um, and we, uh, uh, we went fishing and it was a, a really, really wonderful time, a wonderful experience for, you know, for, for me and my sons and, and something that we definitely, uh, well, something that I'll, I'll treasure for a long, long period of time. We, uh, yeah, we went, we went out fishing. Let me see if I can find one picture here. Let's see if it pulls up. Um, let's see if we can find, I'll show you a picture. Yeah, this is what I'll do. <laughs> okay, this is actually really quite funny. When my sons, we were wrestling with the one fish. Uh, let's see if we've got it. Maybe this is a good one here. Okay, this is a good one. So I'll pull a picture up and you guys can see. This is what I did yesterday. I actually took a little bit of time off and we went out on the river and we caught that guy, which is pretty cool. This is a, um, this is a, uh, a sturgeon in the river. And so it's quite a, this one was just about 38 pounds. And so my, my son's had a really good time. My son on the right here, Connor with the sunglasses, that was his 18th birthday. And uh, yeah, it was really, really fun. We had a good time. So that's what we did. Um, that's what I did yesterday. I was fishing on the water. So my nose is a little bit, a little bit red from sun. But uh, yeah. And on all honesty, that's why I'm doing all of this. It's, it's for my family. Uh, you know, as much as it is for everybody else, this is, this is how I'm able to, to support them. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Victor, uh, someone is saying that an agent, I, well, that's great. I, maybe the agent is right, <laughs> I, but I can't, I can't confirm that. If I do hear something, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, it's reached KK. The, the max for graduate path is, is reached. <laughs> uh, uh, Veneri says, we know your intentions are good. I'm, I'm hurting with you every Every time people criticize others that are doing their best to help other people, we can't please everybody. No, we can't. But I'll tell you, I'm sure going to try. <laughs> I'm sure going to try. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, Pranvera, I really don't know if it's going to open again. I really don't think so at this stage. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. You seem to be dull. I am dull. I wasn't even going to do the live today, but I, I decided, you know what? I haven't, I haven't missed for like four years. Well, there's been a handful of times when I had to reschedule, but yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you for the support. Thank you for the support. Yeah. After reading the email that I got from one of the schools this morning, I was like, do I just shut this whole thing down? You know? Um, I was going to have, I was going to have one of the schools 
you know, that I talked to, because they were the only one that I actually even knew that uh, about this. I was going to have them join me today, but then I thought, okay, and then I bring one on, and then it'll be some kind of implied endorsement of that school over others. And I don't know any of them. I'm not in a position to do any of that. And so I just tried to do the video to correct it and try to limit the damage as much as possible. But yeah, after getting that, that email from, from the school, I, uh, yeah, I pretty much just wanted to, um, shut the day down and just go crawl in bed and pull the covers over my head and, <laughs> and just go to sleep. <laughs> But anyways, when you make a mistake, you man up, you take responsibility for it, and you try to fix it. And that's exactly what you do. You don't shy away. You don't make excuses. You, you own it, and you move forward. And that's essentially what I've tried to do. Okay. Okay, and there's lots of people asking questions about forgetting stuff for the TR to PR. I'll get more information for you shortly. But at this stage, we really don't have any idea what they're going to be doing. Okay, I'm not sure about this one. Mr. Futures says, I got approved for PR. Do I have chances to get approved my ARC? Your authorization to return, my, my friend, that's not something I can answer. I don't know. You'd have to ask the person who helped you to file it. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Ilum says, uh, what did you do? Why are you sad? Well, <laughs> I'm sad because... Because for the first time in over four years of doing these lives, every single week, answering rapid fire questions, I made a mistake in my response that that potentially harmed uh, parties, people. And, um, and that's why I'm a little bit sad. I wish I could just rewind and retract. The video is gone. I've pulled it off as quick as I could and redid another video as quick as I could once I realized the issue. <clears throat> but it's, yeah, we'll just have to play it by ear. Um, Bella says, I think all these years I've never seen you so sad. Rick Smart, you're such a great person. Well, thank you, Bella. I appreciate that. And you know our history, you and me, right? Okay. Um, yeah, Nassarg says, can I apply for essential worker category? I've worked 1,560 hours as part-time cashier doing study. Yeah, if you, were, if you were doing it legally, if you were 20 hours or less during school and full-time in the breaks, um, then yes, you you can uh, do that on the force of a study permit authorization. So yeah, that's possible, Ms. Sarge. CC dropping to 350. Well, do you know what? I never even looked at that. You know, have we? I haven't even talked about this. Everything TR to PR pathway has has uh, has just driven this whole process. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Do we? I don't know if we have another new round of invitations. Let's see. Do we today? Uh, nope, we don't. So today is Wednesday, and I think we were all looking to see if there was going to be another another draw. And here's the here's the screen. And so no new rounds of invitations today. Sometimes we see it happen right while we're live, right? But today the last one was April the 29th. So we're at the stage now, and that was a CEC draw, low score 400. So the question is, do you think it'll go down to 350? Well, if they keep doing the lie, you know, the, the rounds of invitations in large groups and they're only CEC and a whole bunch of people are going through TR to PR pathway, you guys can do the math, right? It's entirely possible that, you know, could it go down to 350? Well, we saw it go below there before. So I'm never, ever going to say never. I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay. All right. Hogar says, cheer up. <laughs> well, I'm sure hoping that it will, uh, at least it'll work out in everybody's, everybody's favor. And yeah, anyways, okay. Um, what non-essential job entails? Uh, I can't answer what that, uh, what a non-essential job entails. Tasha, I'm not quite sure what, what you mean by that. Um, Nope, you're not going to apply until you actually have the full hours there. Yeah, I don't know. Um, any scope for reopen? I don't think so. Like at this stage, if you were to ask me my opinion, I'm going to say no. Um, I think there's so many people that wanted to go through the essential grad one. It filled up fast, and I guess we'll see how many are getting, you know, returned or rejected. But boy, I, I you know, I don't, I don't think... 
uh, within that program. I don't think it's designed really for them to to open it up again. Okay, uh, <laughs> thanks, CC. I appreciate that vote of confidence. You know, this it, the purpose of, of talking about this was more just to take responsibility and to try to to correct the record um, than it was to you know to curry sympathy because you know I'm a big boy and when I make comments I'm responsible for them and I knew I knew going in into this that there would potentially be a time where I said something that you know that maybe I didn't understand the context which is exactly this is exactly the case if I understood you know before I made the comment then it would have been just fine. But unfortunately, um, you're going fast through this, trying to answer as many questions as you can. And yeah. Yeah, it is true. You're, you're right, Gio. Yeah, they keep posting and asking Mark about the Quebec situation and then run back to the college with his opinion. Yeah. And that's what I definitely, yeah, do not want to happen. And so... I, I'm not going to be answering or, or fielding any questions about that. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Um, yeah, so I think we've got this one as well. You can, if you're on a valid study permit and you're working in accordance with the study permit, you can potentially meet those 15, 60 hours. And then Geo says they attack every post and now they're nowhere to be found. That's true. You know, that's basically how it works, right? It's so tough. It's so tough because sometimes people who have other motives too will set you up, right? They'll set you up with questions and then hope they can get something and then use against you. And that's how it always is. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's mainstream media or whether it's YouTube or wherever, but the reality is I've got a big platform now and I've got a responsibility. So, so thanks, Gio, for that update there. Um, I think at this stage, guys, we are kind of at the end. Um, let's see here. Uh, we don't know about processing times. We'll just have to see, Rushin. Um, okay, Lavilia, I'll finish off with yours. Okay, we kind of started with TR to PR and we'll finish with TR to PR. So can you please expand the eligibility on work experience with one year experience or worked hours of 1560 requirement in the past three years? Is there a max hours per week? Thanks, keep safe. You cannot exceed 30 hours and accumulate your work experience in less than a year. It's as simple as that. So the everything that we've been told, it's very similar to CEC claiming that one year. And you'll see that within CEC, it clearly states that you cannot accumulate 1,560 hours before you hit the one year mark at, by working 40 or 45 or 50. So it has to be, you have to have been working for a year. And if it's part-time, 15 hours per week, then same, same story applies if it's less than 30 hours. So it takes longer to accumulate that. All right. Okay. I'm going to end it right there and we'll keep you guys posted. Uh, I still intend to try to give updates and to do videos and things like that to help you in your various journeys. Uh, like I said before, the courses, at least that's my safe place. I can, I can talk in my courses. I can share information in my courses and and teach and, and be the teacher that I truly want to be in the courses. And uh, the TR to PR pathway right here, you can see is 50% off. If you click on the link below, you can get access to it. And uh, remember this, this program is, you know, it's a, uh, it's 50% off because I'm not going live in here anymore, but I've recreated all the videos and you have access to the private group and everything. So go check that out. If you're looking at uh, doing an essential worker, um, uh, pursuing that the international grad program, is capped and uh, you can see as of this it's actually this is this is needs to be updated because the intake it's already full um, and then if you go back here I am at, on Monday if you are an express entry person uh, you can go right here to the course and on Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. mountain time that's when I am starting my next express entry masterclass where I will be there for one week and this is from the 17th to the 21st each evening that's live Q&A's answering your questions. And the reason that it's shorter is because the course material is so good in here. And all of the questions are really all embedded in the course materials. And so the lives are just to answer uh, small little questions that people have. So if you're looking at Express Entry, you've got an ITA, you're looking to file, head on over here and you can subscribe uh, to this masterclass. And um, the prices are all the same in US dollars. All right. Okay.
We'll see where the future holds. Thank you for all of your support, everyone. I really, really, truly appreciate it. And I wish you guys all the very, very best as you're navigating your way through this crazy world of Canadian immigration. Take care, guys.